Well, I've left Northfield. Uh, I got up a little bit early today. <clears throat> it's raining there. It's still raining here. It's raining here. It's supposed to be sunny at the Meadows now. I had to go to the Meadows. I have to pick up Prince Charmer. And uh, I was a little frustrated. You know, we took widespread panic from Ontario over to Pennsylvania, qualified him. I was pumped. Let's get him into race. And uh, also, well, how's that even possible? I forget sometimes that it's PA owned and sired first, especially in the Maiden and Elmer's two classes in Pennsylvania. So him being an Indiana, Indiana bred owned by us did not get preference, which is so frustrating to me. The obvious answer is just send him to Indiana, but I did want to get a start under his belt. So um, the staging point for them heading to Indiana will be Northfield anyway. So. If he is not in to go, so they rode the class back for Friday. If he does not get in to go on Friday here at the Meadows, he'll be on the trailer with Prince Charmer heading back to Northfield. But that wasn't the most pressing issue was to get it was to get over here and train pickpocket and insider trading. Now, obviously I have to be in Miami Valley. We have five horses in stake races on Thursday night, and there's just not enough time for me to race in uh, the Meadows and then go to Miami Valley. So we're going to need a driver for insider trading and stay close. Not the easiest horses to get along with, but nevertheless, uh, not the hardest either. So, um, we'll get both those guys uh, tightened up and, and ready to go for whoever's driving them. Now, insider trading, a little trick here. Tonight, Mel Gibbs won races. Now, Marco and a number of other partners own pieces of insider trading and Mel Gibbs won. And, you know, when you have horses like Sedona Hill that just didn't meet your expectations this year. That's fine. That's more about expectations than it is Sedona Hill. But when it comes to, but when it comes to, um, when it comes to memory, uh, insider trading and um, and a horse like Mel Gibson, it's not expectations, right? These are horses that Mel Gibson trotted. 55 last year it was a winner in 58 tried him 56 multiple times and looked like a serious contender in that class geez we raced him in the peter Hout. it's how good he was racing last year and for him to come back and struggle around the two minute 59 mark is mind-boggling to me it's not in his blood it doesn't show any lameness so we're just going to have to race him back into shape i guess back into his shape I hope. Same as insider trading. She did the same thing as a two-year-old. Trained down, didn't need the hobbles, looked great, did all her work good. Geez, I qualified her. She looked great in the qualifier. Free-legged, bandages bandage on behind, nothing on up front. Looked good. Made a break in her first start from the rail, but then made a break in her second start coming off the car. Put the hobbles on her. Didn't really look like her old self last week. Now, is that her rounding into shape? It's possible, I suppose. But I do expect a little bit more from her. And from you. So part of me coming over today was to go with her. Just a slow mile. We did make some shoeing changes. We'll continue to tinker with her gear until we get her the way we want her. She's not there yet. And also, I want to train Pickpocket in preparation for of his in preparation of his 2024 debut on Friday. Now, a lot of the storylines I'm about to talk about tie together, right? We're going to talk about Collector and how he raced yesterday and where he fits. It does tie together with Pickpocket, Memory, and Imagination because that's the class, right? Before we get to any of that, we did a couple of qualifiers yesterday. I won a qualifier. Wanted to get Drebin back on track. We made, remember, I was in Ontario on Thursday. He made the break. I had a long conversation with James, Dominic, and Preston about what's needed. What, what our thought process was. Looked at his shoes closely. Decided on a, a, some footwear changes for him. So I was eager to find out how he qualified yesterday. James said he was better behaved, he wasn't interfering as much, he was good. He said the only downside was it was 2-1. Anytime I get to take a little poke at James, I tried to, just because he's my brother. I said if there was any way we could have just saw him go faster, you know, instead of 2-1, it would have been great. He goes, well, 
you know, it'll go faster in the race. I said, yeah, but then if he makes a break in the race, I'm more apt to want to kill you. So it's t- it's getting harder to make fun of James because he's James McDonald. I'm sure, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure that, um, you know, you think all the baseball players that are great players now, right? I'm sure Juan Soto has a younger brother, or an older brother somewhere that used to tell him how to swing the bat, too. Anyway, um, he was happy with Drebin, thought he qualified good, uh, mechanically much better, mentally much better, because they run hand in hand, right? When the horses are interfering and hitting, they get really hot. That, that's bad, because when they get really hot, then they start hitting more. So it really cascades quickly, and you need to get to the root of the problem. Um, turn one of those faucets off and then uh, and then the rest should fall in place and hopefully yesterday's qualifier was a, a real watershed moment for um, for uh, Drebin both on the track and, and in his gate. Now the other horse that schooled yesterday was did not know you know and this is important this will lead to a number of storylines also over the next few weeks any of these horses that don't look like they're going to be competitive, we'll race them a couple of times in the condition claimer Northfield um, or the Meadows and get some lines on them. But if they're not going to Mohawk, there's no point in going to London and finishing second in 2-1-4 and four, or 59-4. and four. It really doesn't do a whole lot for people that they're looking to buy an overnight horse. Um, so when it comes to a J-Port Beach Boy, 57-59, he's not grassroots caliber. And I'm not overly tickled about looking at prospect series races for him because they're going to be tough too. So he is coming to Northfield Park. He's going to race at Northfield Park for two or three starts. If he does well, then fine. If he does okay, then we'll probably look to move him. And the same goes for Did Not Know. I know that the Schaefer family owns Did Not Know, but the Schaefer family doesn't want condition claimers bouncing around and paying bills on them, and I don't blame them. So Did Not Know will likely come back over here after she's qualified. Qualify the filly, draw her blood, get her ready to ship. Any of those horses that can't do in Ontario are moving out, and that's that. And and by moving out, I mean they will likely make a full move at some point. And I don't think any of my partners on J-Port Beach while watching this are like, oh my God, please no. I just, I, I think we should be racing it. Because there just isn't a place to race a three-year-old pacer that qualified 57 and two. It's not like he kept 27 and three and drew off on a soft field. No, he finished last. So we need to get him in where he can do some damage. It's not going to be at Mohawk. It's not going to be at London. It's not going to be at Flamborough. It can be right over here at Northfield Park, and I don't care if he's an Ontario bred. Means very little right now. He's a three-year-old pacer that we're looking to find a competitive race for. Now, if we can't, that's a totally different story. but I suspect we can. So that is what's going on there. That's the timeline or the, the storylines we're talking about. Uh, did not know she will be coming over here. And that leads into all of those horses. Now, great bet. He was castrated. He's castrated right now today. Um, and then in two and three, two or three weeks, we'll have him back in full swing, probably two weeks, ready to go. And at that point, um, at that point, we'll have a clear view of him also. Is he going to be, uh, he, as of right now, even, he's a better horse than, than Jake Moore Beach Boy, but that's neither here nor there if neither of them can do in the state races in Ontario or the non horse two classes, and if that's the case, then he too will be on a bus heading this way. Now, this is a, a tough time of year in that regard where people, you know, and I'm no different. You know, we just talked about Mel Gibson and insider trading. Disappointing starts of the year. They're going to be effective somewhere, but disappointing starts of the year. They're not always like that. And, and that's, you know, the thing that we love about racing and watching some of these horses jump forward is the very thing, the other side of that coin that, that just breaks our heart, right? It's not the first time. It's not the last time you're going to see it this year. We have two-year-olds that we're all hopeful for and, and touting them in one way or another. But when push comes to shove and they get to the races and, you know, the latter part of June into July and August, there's going to be some heartbreak there too, inevitably. It's just the way racing is. You guys know that. So, uh, last night, how did things go? Well, I just talked about Collector and why it was important. Now, Collector raced up a class but had the nine holes. So, it's hard to discern any sort of certainty from that. I'll talk to 
Stacy and Brett and see what they think about Collector. But when it comes, when it really boils right down to Collector, um, I would like a little more information. Now, uh, you look at yesterday's race. Did he trot? Can he trot fast enough? Of course he can. He's tried in 55, 54 before. He can trot fast enough to do in there. Is he going to do in there? I'll, I'll, I'll defer that to one of two or both things, which would be a discussion with Stacy and Brett and a fair race from an inside post. I think is fair. Now to take that further, when we look at where does Collector fit the best? Originally, I said, oh, I'll just send him back to Ontario, but there's no class in Ontario right now. I know Harry said he wanted him back, but to go swear. I'm not racing him in the numbers of 10,000 last four against horses with 40 and 50 starts lifetime. Absolutely not. He fits the class that memory and imagination and pickpocket are in on Friday. Nom one is a two, but not more than four. When he gets out of there, it's nom one is an eight. And quite frankly, if he can't do a straight nom one is eight, which I find unlikely, I think he can. Then at that point, we can look at potentially pricing him. 40 claimer, nom one is a 10. In, in, uh, which would be Miami Valley. I assume they're going to write the same class as Iota. But as I say that, I shouldn't assume things. I don't know for certain. So we're going to have to take a little look at the Iota sheet also. There may be an hour is a 6, an hour is a 7, an hour is 8. In which case, it's a moot point. Last night also, we had Yo Mister. Raced out of the 10 hole. Now, when you take him back, he's not super effective. Never is. But when Louis left with him his first start, he was really not effective. And I'd really not like to butcher the horse. So I just asked Jody, you know, just play it by ear, but I'd rather not gun him from the car, if, if at all possible. Because it did look like a salty enough crew inside of him. And But he did race poor. Got away ninth, and I'm like, ah, maybe I should have just shut my mouth and let him you know, go out of there with him. And then Harry had sent me a message shortly thereafter and said he scoped two and a half out of five or as they like to say over here, five out of ten for mucus. Um, so enough, more than enough. You know, this guy likes to be in the mix. His best racing is done on the front or in the up close two, three hole, or even when James left with him, got shuffled back and he was charging late in the mix. But from the ten hole and a tough clear, and I'll tell you what, if Jody had him out there last night with that mucus in him, he would have looked dreadful. So although... It was a, a very poor outing, a very ten, a very poor 10th. It could have been a very disgusting 10th had he driven him differently. So I appreciate that for sure. Um, get him cleaned up and get him, hopefully have both him and Collector. Everybody drew poor last night, right? 10 hole for Yo Mister, 9 hole for for uh, Collector, and 8 hole in an 8 horse field with with uh, looks like money. Now looks like money, James drove him perfectly. Stretched Perfetto just long enough that he couldn't release that horse first over. And knowing that Perfetto drifts out, there would be a clear lane. The only problem was money gets on the left line. If you watch down the lane, he wears that line pole outside, running in, running out. So he's trying to fit him into a tight spot and then kind of wrestling with him the whole way down the lane to keep him moving forward down, down against the pylons. Not an easy thing to do. James did a great job and he was just beat at the wire, but looked like he was closing in at the wire. Now, um, the other issue was that was the first time he raced back-to-back -back, uh, this year. So next week, if he happens to get in on that third start, I think given the trip he had last night, given the horse himself, and having him back in three starts in a row, I think you're going to see a very, very good looks like money next week. So that's impressive and hopeful as we uh, head into the rest of the week. Now, um, what, is on what is on tap for today? Aside from the training of uh, insider trading and uh, pickpocket. What else is going on today? We got Mel Gibson tonight, but we do have some horses racing this afternoon, right? We have Lonely Lakewood. He's off a week into tonight. Brace for landing, off a week into, into this afternoon, sorry. Both of those horses have outside shots. And then we also have Three Point Blue Chip now, keeping a very close eye on Three Point Blue Chip. Um, and he ties into a number of these storylines also. I don't know that, that Oak Grove is a, a perfect place for him to be racing. If he wins today, he jumps up into a place that's real salty, especially for the way he's been lately. And if he doesn't race good, it makes it tough for him to, to race at all right now. So if he doesn't do well today, I suspect it's probably a conversation with Julie talking about... Um, I already had one with, with Tom and Julie and, and the 
said, well, we're going to put him back on Lasix and see how he races. And he didn't race that bad. Um, his first start back. Now we'll see how he races today. Because there are classes in the Meadows for him. And quite frankly, that is a horse that can probably fit in the middle of the order right now in Ontario also. So he may make his return to Ontario for us. We'll see how that plays out. Um, tomorrow, Wednesday, we are at uh, Miami Valley in stake races with... Uh, let me see if I can get this right. Purple People Eater. Sedona Hill, we, we told them we'd race the Philly for him one more time. So she's in to go at uh, Miami Valley also. As is I'm Fancy Like. Didn't draw the greatest. But we're going to have to, uh, you know, work with what we're given, so to speak. But the biggest thing, the biggest storyline of all that, all those stake races tomorrow in Miami Valley, is Virgil Morgan put Sugar instead in the Buckeye. This is probably the, one of the best fillies in the state. Raced in the Breeders' Crown last year, and I've had three or four people say, you know, what kind of a move is that? Aside from being a dirty one, it's a smart one. Now he can race them in, because their series is coming up at, at Sayota. Horses that raced in the Buckeye. Opens a lot of doors for Sugar instead. Doesn't need many doors open for her. She's one of the best fillies around, as I said. So it make thing, makes things tough for us. So rather than going down to racing that two year Nomers 2 series, we may just stick around Northfield Park and race in the Nomers 2. Not ideal, not perfect. But again, I think what may have just happened is Virgil just ensured that the series wouldn't fail and the Nomers 2 will. Or maybe I'm wrong, who knows? But I'm not going there uh, knowing that if we draw with uh, sugar instead that your best case scenario is, is a second place finish because make no mistake she would literally have to do a belly flop and even the gate for her for us to have any chance of beating her uh, at any point very very solid filly take nothing away from purple people leader i like her she is a light year away from sugar instead that's her name right sugar instead uh, so that's Wednesday in Southern Ohio. I'm coming over to drive Lover's Play. 9-2, to two. man, she raced like a Bearcat the other day. Coming in on five days notice, right? So she's going to be super tight. Um, must be some killers in there for her to be 9-2 to two because she looked good the other day. Uh, and then tomorrow night, pull the shoes, 3-2. to two. She's in a real good spot, coming in good. Uh, Vaquero Blue Chip drew the outside. That was upsetting. I was disappointed to see that. What's the other horse we've been? Only three in. Vaquero Blue Chip. Oh, Blanton's Blue is in tomorrow night also. Now, he too will soon have to start looking at New York. Uh, really don't care. Qualified the other day. Um, where would she fit in New York? If she can fit in an hour or two of Mohawk right now, I'm more apt to send her there. You know, the, the thing with New York is it's great to have a Sire Steak Philly. And I'm sure it's okay to have a, a real good. Um, what do they call them? Excelsior, Philly. But you got to travel all over a giant state uh, to race for twenty grand every so often, and it's great if you have, if you have the best one or one of the best ones. Great, but if you're going there at six or seven to one, you're racing at Yonkers, and then you're going to Buffalo, Batavia, and Vernon, you know, Tioga, Saratoga, Monticello. Easy now. Let's just see how things play out for it. And, you know, it was funny because last year, Five Fish Species never even looked at a steak race until the latter part of the summer, I don't believe. So we'll see how that plays out with uh, Really Don't Care and uh, Blanton's Blue. But for now, Blanton's Blue is racing in Ohio tomorrow night. On Thursday, we have the five horses at Northfield Park. Obviously, I'm watching Ready for Landing closely also um, to see how James gets along with him. I like what I saw. I think everybody liked what they saw the other day. And, um, you know, am, am I thinking that Pickpocket Ready for Landing head to New Jersey? It's a possibility. I'd like to get him stretched out in New Jersey. Mentally, I like what I see from him. Still a little grabby at the gate, but much, much better than he was. And very polite uh, the other day following now. The race went perfectly. You know, Louie never tightened. I never had to grab up. I wasn't on top of the helmet. I was just following loose cover. Um... I'm just following loose cover the whole way and you know everything worked out perfect so we'll see how things work out with uh, with ready for landing on Thursday victory blue chip is in and also I think we have another horse in we have a number of horses racing but for me the most excitement's gonna happen Friday Saturday I, I hope that um, I hope that 
memory and pickpocket get in on Friday separately so we can race them. That would be very, very good for us. And then Saturday, the first big start of the year. Tim told me yesterday he trained RC very hard and he trained great. He was extremely happy with the way he trained. Not shocking, because I was extremely happy with the way he raced, uh, the way he qualified. So Arson's ready to go and time is on my side. That huge mile of 51 and 1 the other day, we have him in the Sire Stakes also. So the biggest thrills for me this week, I hope that we do well in Miami Valley in the Buckeyes, but uh, the Sire Stakes and the prep work for pickpocket, memory and imagination, Arson and time is on my side coming up this weekend. I'm going to fly home on Saturday evening uh, as my brother James is getting married on Sunday. I was planning on driving home with the family, but of course, you don't always get what you want. There, uh, There's a lot of work to be done here this week at the stable.ca. So as I said, I'm off to uh, the Meadows. I'm going to train Insider Trading. I'm going to train Pickpocket. I'm going to take Prince Charmer back with me in the trailer and potentially widespread panic if uh, he does not get in on Friday. We'll see how that storyline plays out uh, as the morning unfolds. For now, for now, I will uh, let you go. I hope you guys have a wonderful day uh, and take care.